three members of the state board walked into the bathroom, I was washing my hands, and this guy said, do you, do you hear what I heard? Those, those people at South Mountain want a community college. They don't need a community college down there. 40 years ago, all they saw was desert. 40 years ago, they didn't think we'd still be here. The set, when they built it, they used temporary walls so it could just collapse in case the college didn't make. 40 years ago, they didn't think our community needed access to higher education. They went, a group of people went to the district to get this college started. There was an attitude about South Phoenix, and the attitude was that, oh, the people are happy down there. They don't want to be educated. No way. There were people who fought to get this college. I was at Mesa Community College as an adjunct at the time, and there was a little bit of unrest at the larger campuses because they felt that money that they could use on their campus was being put into South Phoenix where it wasn't going to do any good or it wasn't needed. But 40 years ago, they couldn't imagine. It's time for us to tell the history of South Mountain Community College. It's time for us to reclaim the history of South Phoenix. It's time for us to celebrate our ancient heritage. It's time for us to defend our significance. From our agricultural roots, citrus trees, and flower gardens. Well, we were gonna call it Citrus College initially. Yeah, because of the orange trees. There were a bunch of orange trees. And that was a, a big a big discussion. And then we decided to go to South Mountain because we needed to build up the area. And this would be helpful to the area. But Citrus College was, uh, was one of the keys that we talked about, one of the names that we talked about. We are growing flower uh, uh, vegetables when you moved, uh, got out of uh, the camps. And uh, my neighbor, Kishiyama's, uh, started growing a few acres of flowers uh, and it looked pretty good to me so I started growing flowers and I had some friends that were in the flower business and uh, uh, they uh, helped me uh, ship uh, flowers to the eastern market like uh, Chicago and New York and places like that and it grew uh, from there where there was about seven of us doors along Baseline Road. We were up here near Baseline Road because up close to the mountain, it's kind of a thermal belt. Uh, the warm air would uh, drain down from the top of the mountain and down, and it kept a little warmer here. To bear land, trailers, and borrowed spaces. The first day I got here, again, we're, we're in trailers, and I'm saying, where are we going to hold classes? The church. The church. <laughs> okay. Right over here, it's gone now, was a chicken farm. And it stunk to high heaven. It stunk to high heaven. Okay, so that's one challenge. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was no air conditioning in the church. This is, this is October in Arizona. It's hotter than hell. So they bring in these huge fans and you had to shout to be heard because they made a ton of noise. I mean, I, I, I speak very loud when I teach or I used to teach. I don't think I, they heard me. We started in collapsible buildings. Now we have global influence. SMCC, born of community, anchored in our community, honoring our community. Humble origins, heroic legacy. The South Phoenix Oral History Project is here to capture and preserve the legacy of SMCC and our surrounding neighborhoods. So now, it's time for you to be a part of the South Phoenix Oral History Project. We need your voice. You know something we don't. Tell your story. You're the only one who can. <laughs>